Happy New Year. Welcome back to the Teens Cornerstone Lesson of 2024. On our panelists today, we have Teacher Jonan, Teacher Kevin, Barbara, and Elsie. And in the orchestra, we have Ashley and Elsie. And our sign language interpreter is Joyce. My name is Brenda Maiwa, and I welcome you to a new year with teens as we learn more from our lesson and more about our Lord. Before we start, let's bow heads for a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we come before you today and we thank you for this fresh start, this new year that you have given us the grace to be in. As we're about to start this quarter's lesson, may we learn more about you and learn to be able to be influences just like Christ to everyone around the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Happy New Year and welcome to the first quarter 2024 
of the 10th class Cornerstone Connections lesson recording. Our theme for the whole of this quarter is Kings and Prophets. And today's lesson title is An Undelivered Gift. But before we begin, I'd like to introduce our panelists for today, starting on my immediate right. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. My name is Barbara Oduk. I will be leading you through this session. Yes, Happy New Year 24, and Happy Sabbath, and once again, Happy First Week of the New Year. I'm Kevin Mwangi. I'll also be taking you through the lesson. I'm um, Happy New Year. My name is Al Sadama. I hope you had a good holiday, and I'm so excited to be here. All right, and my name is Jonan Magana. Glad to have you here. Before we start, I'll ask uh, Barbara to pray with us. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Kind and ever living master, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for allowing us to gather here to study your lesson, oh dear Lord. And dear Father, even as we teach everyone around the world, please give us knowledge and understanding that comes from you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Barbara. So today's lesson, an undelivered gift. Huh. Very catchy topic. And uh, if you remember from the previous lesson, I we were talking about... Um, um, the children of Israel, that is King David's reign all the way through um, Jesus and uh, the, the fathers that God chose for his son. But now today we're talking about an undelivered gift, huh. which, which begs a question before we even start. Is a gift really a gift unless it's received? It's just something to think about. Is it really a gift if someone does not receive it or accept it? Okay, that's just something to think about. Um, but for today, our lesson is about Moses and when he was relinquishing his position to Joshua. Now the Israelites are about to have a new leader before they cross over into Canaan. So this undelivered gift is actually Moses not stepping foot into Canaan as God had promised him. But we see he delivers another better gift to Moses. But before we now dive into our lesson today, I'd like to ask Kevin, to take us to the what do you think section. Um, yes, once again, good morning. And, and once again, it's happy to see you and to be with you again after a year that ended just a few days ago and happy to be in a new chapter. So today's question that we get to learn is, or the question is uh, pretty much simple to most of us. What would you wish to be a gift on your 18th birthday? You know, um, uh, possibly before I go into the options they've given us, maybe I can ask um, one of my panelists um, um, to tell us what she thinks about what gift to do one for your 18th birthday. Uh, personally, I think for my 18th birthday, I would love to get a novel. Yeah, a really, really interesting novel. Ah, that's interesting. What about on my... Other side, Elsie, what do you think? What will you want for your 18th birthday? Okay, maybe you can even skip and say maybe 25th or something, but what, <laughs> what do you think about that? For, for me, my 18th birthday, I like to be independent. And so I'd like, if it, I'd like it if my parents would give. <laughs> I'm still laughing at it. I'd like it if my parents would give me a financial guide or like ways to... This economy is hard, so I need I need ways to survive in this tough economy. So it, it would be it would be nice if they gave me a talk or gave me a novel or something that like I want to be financially independent. So if they'd help me with that, that'd be like the best birthday gift ever. Wow, okay. wow that's interesting, Teacher John. And you know they are giving us some options of <laughs> a computer, yes, clothes, a things, cell phone, yeah. you know, something else. I don't know. Maybe for Elsie, possibly. Maybe for her, she would consider having, you know, like, why don't you invest in me, get me mm -hmm. a, a house on my own, get me some hassles to do, so that as I go about campus, I remain independent. But what do you think, Jonan, um, <laughs> about that, you know, for any birthday present? Would an mm. 18th birthday be a, an ideal for her to get maybe a house, <laughs> maybe some, uh. a car to move around and some hassle, so that she doesn't have to rely on, you know? Mm. What do you think? Uh, what I think. Um, for 18th birthday, you're still a teenager. If you're still looking mm -hmm. forward to 18th birthday, it means 
<laughs> not yet an adult, right? Yeah, that's true. So what most teenagers would ask for are just, um, actually it's something very deep, both of them. Mm -hmm. Most teens in this generation right now mostly go for like luxury stuff or um, just quick fix things, you know, a phone or a new, a new car or something. Yeah. But I, I like what Barbara said, you know, a novel, that means knowledge. That's the same thing, knowledge. That is something that cannot perish. So uh, I think for birthdays, people, even for a new year like right now, most people tend to look forward to having something that can really help them as they grow into a new stage. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, so as we come to this, and as you continue with the lesson, then it's very clear that everyone as they turn a year older, maybe 17, 18, 20, or even beyond by far, they usually would want a gift. However, the problem, and back to the lesson today, is having a promised gift that was not delivered. Like, for example, maybe someone told you, I'll, someone told you they'll give you this and that, but they never delivered. Possibly, you know, we can talk about a birthday, we can talk about a wedding, where people have wedding and someone promised, I'll give you a five-day paced cruise ship to some country, but they never deliver. And so that's why I challenge you as you start up this lesson, as you start up this year, to remain focused and, 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 and get back, to get to understand what is it and delivered gift. All right. Yeah, over to you, teacher, Jonan. Thank you, Kevin. Um, still on that, probably uh, Barbara can read for us from the punchlines, and for those who have the lesson, uh, or the Bible as well, First Kings chapter 8, verse 53. First uh, Kings chapter 8, verse 53, and it says, For your signal... For you signal them out from all the nations of the world to be your own inheritance. inheritance, just as just as you declared through your servant Moses when you, sovereign Lord, brought our ancestors out of Egypt. Mm, thank you for that. So basically, just to touch on the same thing we're talking about, about gifts, the Israelites had been promised a gift by God, which is um, to become the light to the world, to bring salvation to the earth through them. But they did not seem to understand that gift. They wanted something that they could see, something instantaneous. So they failed to look at the bigger picture, which is God was wanted to bless the world through them. And so they rejected this gift. That is why the gift was undelivered. It's not that it got lost along the way. It's God had the gift straightforward to them. It's just that these people did not see what gift that is coming to them. All right? Thank for that. Uh, moving on, we can read uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 46 and 47. I will read that as I let Barbara just um, plan to give us a summary of what the story talks about. So Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 46 and 47, it says, And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which you shall command your children to observe, to do, all the words of this law. 47. For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. And through this thing you shall prolong your days in the land, whether you go over Jordan to possess it. Now the whole of Deuteronomy 32, um, it's, it's known as the Song of Moses. All right? These are the words Moses was giving um, to the Israelites before he gives the position over to Joshua. However, Moses placed a lot of emphasis in this verse 46 and 47 to the children of Israel. And this is a question I'd just like you to think about, our viewer. If someone gave you these same words in uh, Deuteronomy 32, verse 46 and 47, how could you apply them to your life? How would your life be better or different from the other people who do not apply these same words in their lives? So as you think about that, Barbara, can you give us a summary of what our story is from Deuteronomy chapter 32? Uh, thank you so much, Chajonan. So into the story, we have a story about um, the Israelites. Okay, the Lord uh, who led the Israelites out of Egypt and was leading them to Canaan. So here, Nini, the Lord is really angry at the Israelites for rejecting him, for worshipping other gods. And God is really like turning his face away from the Israelites, mm -hmm. and he's like, these, these people, I will let them be taken over by a, a people that are not really a people. Mm -hmm. And Moses is telling Joshua, just like you said in the verse that you just read mm -hmm. in Deuteronomy chapter 46, uh, I, will, that those, 
idol, these are not just idol words and yeah. all that. And so later on, we come to learn that Moses went up a mountain, and on that mountain is where he died. Yeah, all right. that is the brief of the story. Mm. Thanks for that, Barbara. And what was the name of the mountain? The name of the mountain was Mount Nebo. Mount Nebo, yes. And uh, it is, uh, thank you for that. And the Israelites actually believed that Moses died on the mountain and God buried him. Yeah. But you know what happened, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, we can answer a few questions from the punchline question from the out of the story okay. section. Barbara, you can take us through the same. Okay. So for the first question that I prepared for you in the out of the story, mm -hmm. why was Moses not allowed into the promised land? Mm. Maybe Kevin, you could... Um, if we get back to the story before um, this aspect of the promised land, you realize that there is a place whereby Moses, there are instructions that he had been given when he was delivering the Israelites mm -hmm. from Egypt. And some of these instructions, you realize he didn't per se fulfill them or do as God had you know, um, asked him to do. Like, for example, when he was asked to, you know, when the Israelites demanded for water, yeah, water yeah. And, and he became too angry and, you know, the complaints. So for Moses, he became a bit emotional and angry. And when he was asking God, what do we do with them? He was told, just speak to the, the rock. rock. Mm -hmm. But instead, for him, he decided to just hit it. Mm -hmm. And I think that speaks of the anger that he had. And aside from the anger and the fact that he did something that was not supposed to be. So in other words, possibly, and the main reason maybe why he never made it to the promised land was because he may have done some things that were done in the way that weren't supposed to be done, and maybe that could have contributed. That is one of them. And maybe, I don't know if Chicha John and you have any other, but I think that mm. is one that stands out. Yeah. Okay, uh, before I give my comment, probably, Elsie, what do you think? Why, why wasn't Moses allowed in the promised land? I'm going to go with his answer mm -hmm. because he struck the rock, yet he was told to speak to it. Mm -hmm. But then my question is, <laughs> of all the things he had done, he had done so many wonderful deeds, yeah. making the Israelites cross the Red Sea. Yeah. Like, one simple mistake, really. Okay. <laughs> it's actually good you brought it up because um, what, what I believe is uh, the Lord did not allow Moses to go to the promised land because the same reason, right? He disobeyed God blatantly, because the Israelites knew that Moses was supposed to speak to the rock, but he struck it. Now, the Lord does not show favorism. And when he says that there's a consequence for a certain action, he doesn't be like, okay, this is Moses. He's the only person I've spoken to face to face, so I'm going to let him slide. No. The same punishment applies to everyone. So God told Moses the same thing. You disobeyed me, you're not going to go into the promised land. Remember, the reason why the Israelites wandered in the desert for 40 years is because a whole disobedience, yes, and a whole generation had to be decimated so that the new generation cannot get into Canaan. And that is what God was going to do. Moses was part of that generation that was supposed to die off in the desert. So God wouldn't just let that one person sleep away. Remember, Aaron had died, Miriam was dead. So Moses also had to die. So I think that is why God did not allow Moses to the promised land. Oh. He had to keep his word. So yeah. teacher, Jonan, you think it's fair that God kept Moses out of the promised land? Ha, ah, okay. Now I know his way, I contradict myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's fair and bit unfair as well, right? Mm -hmm. Moses was kept out of the promised land, the earthly promised land. That was Canaan. Mm -hmm. But the guy got a way better gift than Canaan. Because... I mean, he was taken up to heaven. What better gift could be than that, right? But yes, it's, God was fair in denying Moses entry into the promised land. Yeah. Okay. So for our next question, what reason did God have to be angry with the Israelites? Elsie? The Israelites? Yeah. Um, when Moses went up the mountain to... I'm going to go back a few scenes before this. When, when Moses had gone up to get the Ten Commandments and, and they, he had stayed up for long, some the Israelites are like, Ay, we, 40 days, this guy's not showing. <laughs> yeah. So they decided they were going to um, 
give out the earrings and the necklaces and all the jewelry to smelt them and Make prepare a, a golden goat. cow. Mm -hmm. And then when, when Moses came back down, he was like, look guys, after all I've done, for, and then you do this. So I'd say God was mad with the Israelites over and because of their incessant complaining, mm -hmm. their lack of trust in him each and every time, despite everything he had done for them, he was like, hey, this guy is bana, had headed. I'm not going to continue with these guys anymore. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. So it's disobedience, basically. Yeah. Same thing. All right. Yeah. So just to add on what Elsie I said, I think God was angry with the Israelites because, yeah, of the fact that they chose not to be a blessing mm -hmm. to other nations. No, God chose them. God chose them to be a people, mm -hmm. his people. And then they are just there and they are making calf gods, making God angry. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think God has every right to be angry with them. True, true. And also just to add on the same, thank you, Barbara and Elsie. Mm -hmm. The Israelites, if you look at it, they broke, I think, almost each and every commandment. There's a specific way they broke it. Right after they were given. You know, you shall have no other God beside me. The calf. You shall make no golden image. I mean, it's right there. You would not, not take the name of the Lord in vain. They took God for granted. They did not keep the Sabbath. They were adulterous the time um, Balaam came and cast yeah. them and all that, right? I mean, if, even you, if you were God, would just get, why, 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 why continue this guy and can still make others and it wouldn't cost me a single ounce of energy, yes. right? Yeah. So uh, God must have been really angry with them. That is why it's mm -hmm. called an undelivered gift for our lesson today. Now, moving on, uh, the key text. I'll ask teacher Kevin to read that for us our key text that comes from Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 9. Yeah, and it says, For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is a lot of inheritance. Mm. And, and, and maybe just to add on to that, um, or the question that is coming out here is, what do you think the verse for today and this week's key text means? Mm -hmm. And maybe could it mean that God blesses the world through his people? Um, equally, the other one they want to find out is, could it mean that the only way that the world will re really get to know God is through the inheritance or legacy God gives to those who choose to follow him? Mm -hmm. And is that the case? So possibly, I don't know if I'll start with Elsie by asking, do you think God usually blesses us through the legacy of his people, you know, or, you know, like so-and-so is righteous, or like, for example, Moses also? What do you think? And then, uh, yeah, do you think you also, what does that really mean to you, that's the case? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take two examples to answer this. For example, if you are, my name not take that one. God, <laughs> cannot, God cannot go to uh, someone who's not been saved to, to shed his light. He will always go to his people, those who, knows, those who know his statutes, his commandments who will be able to be ambassadors of Christ to the whole world, who will shine brighter than everyone else. To the, like, he will go to people who know him. He will start with, you know the thing for, there is this thing in math, they say that he starts from the known to the unknown. Yeah. Yeah. So the people who know you, mm -hmm. you will tell them what you need to do, what they need to do, sorry, so that they can spread the gospel. So I, I, I always think God will shed light and, and to the world through his people. Mm -hmm. And there's also this video I saw on TikTok where um, this person was trying to light 50 candles around one huge candle mm -hmm. using a lighter. So take the lighter and then with the, the it's a big lighter. So it's okay. a very, I've never seen such a lighter, it's so massive. <laughs> no. like I normally see the ones for weddings and candles and it's like it's so massive, I don't know even where they got it, but it's mm -hmm. huge. So he takes the candle uh, the candle, the big candle, then mm -hmm. smaller the candles around it. Not the difference in height is not a lot. It's mm -hmm. just this one is much bigger. Okay. So the lighter comes, and then it once it lights, this candle spreads that flame oh, to yeah. the rest. Mm -hmm. Now you can't take one of those small candles, exchange, and expect that that the same effect. Will, it will have mm -hmm. the same effect. All right. Yeah. Actually, just just to add on that, it's a good thing you brought that up. We can uh, go. It takes me back to the prophecy in Daniel, okay? and it's, it's a bit of a deep thought. But uh, we see that in that prophecy, the Lord gave a certain time period for the gospel to be spread amongst the Jews. Now, once the Jews rejected the gospel by killing Christ, and then 
again by stoning Stephen, then the gospel moved out from the Jews to the Gentiles. At the time, the apostles now moved on to the Gentiles. So the same thing, the Lord reveals himself to his people first. Now, when his people reject them, reject him, then the Lord moves on now to other people. Yeah, so it really makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me, let me progress on by saying, you know, there's a question I came across as I'm trying to look through this lesson and as the week was starting up, I'm also the year. So if that's the case, Elsie, do you think yourself you are a blessing to this world? And possibly, are you also part of this God's inheritance? Like, mm. for example, um, can people be blessed through my ministry or through my service to humanity? And yeah, what do you think about that? Because as you start the year, you may want to focus on something. So do you think you are part of that inheritance or can people be blessed through us? I, I believe I am part of the, the inheritance bill the remnant church that, that God has revealed to, I, I say these things with faith and by God's grace that I may be able to shine his light, that I may, that when I walk through whatever I'm doing outside there, people may be able to see Christ's character in me. I, I don't want to blatantly say that, oh, I have been the best example of Christianhood and I'm, I'm Bible-hugging, Sabbath coming, sorry, mm-hmm. Sabbath keeping SDA, but I say these things with faith and I hope God will continue to hold my hand despite all the many challenges I've gone through or all the things I've done. But with faith, I know I will, I will conquer by God's grace. Right. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Thank you for that. Just before we go to the other part, there's a story that is told of, uh, you know, just based on what uh, she shared, of a very selfish, greedy man that once lived. And he only cared about his money, how he could earn more, and above all, where he could cut to save. You know, the same way most of us are doing nowadays. Comfort, family, friends, community didn't matter at all. So what happened is that one night he had uh, several dreams. One was about what his life could have been. He had not become so greedy. And the next was what his greed was costing him in his daily life. And the final dream was where he was headed to if he did not change and become a blessing to others. What a dream that was, man, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and, 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 and the question from this was, is it indeed this what God was saying to the Israelites? You must become a blessing. This is your purpose, to be a blessing to those around you. Mm-hmm. So imagine that kind of a dream to you, Teacher Jonah, and assuming you had all the wealth and everything, and then you dreamt those three dreams. I'm sure you'll just want just to change immediately life, yeah. and change. But yeah. possibly you can take us through and as, as you know, you push yeah. us on to the next part. All right. Thanks for that, Sir Kevin. Um, I mean, that part just brings up a couple of questions that you can even just ask you to just introspect as we leave here and our view as well. You know, um, uh, was that question again? Yes. Could it mean that the only way the world will get to know God is through the inheritance? That's from the Monday part. Um, God gives to those who choose to follow him. And are you part of God's inheritance? I think that can be a very good place to start the year from. It's just because they just think, are you part of God's inheritance? Are you sharing the blessings promised to his children? As we move on again, thank you, Kevin. Uh, Psalm chapter 2, verse 8. Barbara read that for us. It's also in the punchlines. That's a good thing. Um, Psalm chapter 2, verse 8. Uh, Psalm chapter 2, verse 8, and it says, Ask me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. Mm. Hmm. That's quite the promise. Yeah. Ask me. You just ask me, and I'll give you all this you want. Elsie, can you just tie that to the flashlight? Just give us more insight. Now, to the... Maybe if I just did the flashlight. Okay. Um, through the chosen nation, God has purpose to bring blessing to all mankind. They were hedged about by the precepts of his law, the everlasting principles of truth, justice, and purity. Obedience to these principles was to be their protection, for it would save them from destroying themselves by sinful practices. Christ was the instructor, and in the tabernacle and the temple, his glory dwelt in the holy Shekinah above the mercy seat. In their behalf, he constantly manifested the riches of his love and patience. Mm-hmm. Um, tying that to what we have just said, 
at the questions in the Tuesday parts. Mm -hmm. For example, would you, could it be, could you be the face that has to show the world who Jesus Christ is? Or do you look different or the same as the world around you? I know nowadays you could bear witness. Is there more pressure right now than there was before to be, not to be holy, but to be righteous, to be righteous as, as a teenager? I feel like nowadays there's so much pressure because of social media. Like, sin is bombarding you from all corners. You open yeah. your phone, I didn't know you. Open your <laughs> laptop, like from everywhere. You in the estate, someone is is doing something at the corner, and you just like, it feels. I know it feels like you. It's it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Yes, Barbara, it's hard. I feel yeah, like it's it's really really I, hard. I thought I was all <laughs> and struggling. I know it's hard. You might have been in school, locked up there for maybe two months, and it's pretty easy to lose yourself. But as Psalms 2 verse 8 is saying, ask mm -hmm. me. There's this um, other psalm that says, Psalms 34, test the Lord and, and see if he will not do unto you what he has said he'd do True. to you. Yeah. So if you feel overwhelmed or overburdened or you feel like you're not keeping what you need to be keeping or you feel like, this this is not working. Christianity and me, uh, -uh. like mm -hmm. the things I'm doing as Yandani, but in your distress and your and your despair, always seek to ask God to help you and guide you through all that you do, mm -hmm. and also speak to a comfortable adult, someone okay. who you trust in the faith. To always because these adults that we see in church, hey, they went through rough times. You might not even know, so just <laughs> talk to them because they might be experiencing what you're experiencing, and with Are time. Sindo, yeah. so you've gone through mm. <laughs> they, have. they have. So talk mm. to them. And this this journey is for everyone. Yeah. And we're all at different stages and we need each other. Amen. Um, maybe mm -hmm. teacher John and just to add, I think there is too much energy nowadays to conform. Mm. You know, um, you realize there is too many parties, like you know, um, there are too much happening over the weekends, you know, possibly you just came from school, maybe you're in a certain year, you know, year nine, year 10, 11, or you just joined campus. So you're just trying to find your, you know, you are gripping in, in, in this world and where you belong. And mm -hmm. in the process of doing so, you find yourself in the many events, many programs, international conferences. And when you go to these international conferences, you aren't finding your church mates there. Mm -hmm. You just find everyone mixed up, dressed differently, doing so much. And you realize we find ourselves in the aspect of conformation. Uh, but, but you see in Romans 12 to, you know, a very nice verse that um, became okay. more of our memory test. And, and be ye not conformed mm -hmm. to the patterns mm -hmm. of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your, your mind. mind. Mm -hmm. You know, by the renewing of your mind that you may know the perfect, true, acceptable will of God. Mm -hmm. So you find it's a verse that some of us learned in our Pathfinder lessons or earlier on, but as you come by, you're like, ah, but, but man, you know what? Ah, let's just do it. It's just 10 minutes, you know. It's just, you know, we sugarcoat everything. So it is this thing of conforming. Yeah. And, and I pray that those listening to this lesson, mm -hmm. as you start up this new year, mm -hmm. that God may guide us so that we don't find ourselves in a trap of conforming to the patterns of the this world, world. But, yeah. but, but rather our minds may be transformed. But how do you get transformed? By getting to understand or study the word of God and just try to live what we speak about. True. Amen. Thank you for that. Um, so the biggest challenge to us on that is um, does the world around us see our Christianity or do we have to literally just tell someone I am a Christian, I'm an Adventist? Can someone just look at you and say, this is a child of God in the way you behave, in the way you speak, in the way you do so many other things, all right? Uh, let's, uh, moving on swiftly, the punchlines, okay? But there's a specific punchline I want us to look at. That's 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 50. Uh, Barbara, again, read uh, that for us. 2 okay. Samuel 22, verse 50. And it says, therefore I will praise you, Lord, among all nations I will sing the praise of your, of your name. Mm -hmm. And I uh, think for that, if you look at all the punchlines that we have today, right, all the way from the first one to the last one, the major theme we see is becoming a blessing to other people. So the Lord is calling us as spiritual Israel to become a blessing unto others. 
And a question that uh, we can uh, get from this is, how do we evangelize to others? Because by being a blessing to others, it means we show them what God wants of, us, of them, right? Mm -hmm. Which is evangelizing. And the good things that God wants for us and from us are found in the Bible. So that means we need to share what we have in the Bible with others. That is evangelizing. So this is a question I want to just throw to us, just to think about. How can you see yourself evangelizing? Or even before that, what do you think when you hear the word evangelism? You can just let us know in the comments as well, right? And how do you see yourself evangelizing to other people around you, okay? And then um, we can read Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 14. I'll ask Elsie to read that for us. It's in the punchlines as well. Yeah, and it says that, and your fame spread among the nations on account of your beauty because the splendor I had given you made your beauty perfect, declares the sovereign, mm -hmm. <laughs> declares the sovereign Lord. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, the Lord gives us things that make us um, famous to the people around us, Let me, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, God gives us these things for his glory, for us to use them to serve him. And uh, thinking of that, I want us to just list one thing, each, just one single thing that you can do to become a blessing to people in your sphere of influence or your circle of influence. What one thing can you do to become a blessing to people who are around you? Elsie. I'm going to say in school, I'm more of a very, this is hard to believe for those who know me well. Mm -hmm. Serious, in a way. I don't talk to many people. I focus on what I need to do. So mm -hmm. I think I need to be more sick to know what your neighbor is thinking about, sick to know what your neighbor is feeling. You might be helping them out mm -hmm. with, with, a, with a difficult time. So just yeah. to be more kind and involving with people, share with them what you know, let them share what they know, mm -hmm. just to build better connections with people. All right, so become... Uh more social and build better connection with people around you. Yeah. All right, thank you for that. Kelvin, what one thing can you do to influence people around you? Serving the community. Mm -hmm. Serving the community. That can be so many ways. But you can give us just one. What one way do you think can stand out for you about serving the community? Um, doing community service mm -hmm. and reaching out to those who need us more. Those who need us more, right, the less fortunate. Thank you for that. Barbara. How can you become a blessing to people around you? Uh, how can I become a blessing to people around me? Mm -hmm. That is a very tricky question, <laughs> Shajonan, uh -huh. if you haven't thought about it so deeply. Mm -hmm. Like me, I haven't thought about it so deeply. Okay. So being me, personally, being a blessing to other people, I think, like giving gifts, the less fortunate, mm, yeah. like and visiting those in hospital mm -hmm. and encouraging them that you know God is there. Yeah, you don't have to fight this illness that you are going through alone. God is there for you, mm -hmm. and He'll always be there. He's not like a man who will see, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. you are so much in trouble, and yeah. I don't want to associate with you anymore. God mm -hmm. will always be there. All right, thanks for that. Now, as we close up for today, um, there's a challenge to us, you know. Um, just go and read again Deuteronomy th chapter 32, and it's much of a rebuke, okay? But uh, I want you to read this passage as if it was written directly to you. Just internalize it. Replace every single pronoun directed to the audience, that's the Israelites, with your name. How meaningful is this text when you look at it as if it's a note written directly to you? And then I want you to just, once you think about this, um, if you were going to write a response to God based on Deuteronomy chapter 32, what would you say to him? I want to leave that as a parting shot to us. Read Deuteronomy 32 and just write down a response to God. Just think that verse is speaking directly to you. Like, um, Jonan, I want you to do this and this and this. And now write a response to God. Keep that note on your Bible and just keep reading it time and time again. It's going to help you just learn what God does not like about your life and what he really wants you to do. As we finish up, I'd like to ask Teacher Kevin to read the further insight as we close. Further insight. Um, uh, so the further insight um, speaks like this. Have faith in God. 
he knows your need. He has all the power. His infinite love and compassion never weary. Fear not that he will fail of fulfilling his promise. That's from Prophets and Kings, page 164. Amen. Amen. Thanks for that. Um, just to finish up, parting shot, anything you have to say? From anyone. <laughs> my, mm-hmm. my dad normally says, Ati, okay, be foolish. Be foolish in terms of when the world looks at you, they're like, hey, why is this chick doing what she's doing? Mm-hmm. But in the end, you end up giving them what you have and it changes their life. So mm-hmm. being foolish, in other words, means read your Bible, pray every day, do not engage in certain stuff, even though people are like, hey, it's fun, you come, but you're like, mm-hmm. you know it's wrong. So try as much as you can to be foolish, knowing that God will always bless you in return because you need to be his beacon of light. He has given you this light, and you can't just sit down and stay with your light. You have to stand up and shine it wherever you are. Amen, amen. Just to close up, I want us to just remember that God wants us to become a blessing to the people around us. Family, friends, classmates, your neighbors. So just think about it. What are the blessings that God is providing in your life and how are you sharing them with the people around you? That will be the closing remark for today. So thank you for being with us. Finalists, thank you so much for your input. And thank you for joining us for the very first lesson of this quarter. We look forward to having a very fruitful next uh, 51 lessons for the whole of this year. So as we close, I'd like to Bob uh, to Kevin. He has to pray with us. Yeah, let's pray to wind up. Our Father who art in heaven, we come before you this morning. Um, and we want to give you all the glory and all the honor. We want to thank you for you have led us and guided us all the way. We want to thank you because you've given us a new year. And as we start up this year and push on through God with our goals, targets, and, and so many things we have set in our minds, all we are asking that is that as we do that, God, let us not like this man whom we read about who was just selfish and just wanting more and more and not being a blessing to anyone. Help us that as you start up this year, we may be a blessing to the community. We may partner with you and not forget you like the Israelites had done so and that we may continue on into a good and a blessed year. And we pray that, God, you see us through for the rest of the days and the weeks that are ahead of us. Help us focus more, not only on ourselves and our goals, but also on what we can do to enrich your ministry and to reach out to your people. We pray this trusting and believing, and in Jesus' name, pray, in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen.